50 seconds of logos. Hiking. Talk to We'll soon find out that Buck and Cletus aren't the troublemakers we think they are. So this use of the word bitch is delivered as bait for our prejudice. And I will not be made to feel like the asshole. I will rip your soul out, Daddy. Kids. This Jeep commercial gets undermined by the Ford tourists that beat them to the cabin. This is my girl, Natalie. Referring to your partner as my girl. Is she an Anna Chlumsky movie? A Temptation song? Also, who brings their girlfriend that none of this group have ever met to their sister's detox weekend? Couldn't she have just been one of the friends or a girlfriend that everybody knows? Natalie being a fifth wheel to the proceedings adds nothing. Also, also, discount Sherry Moon Zombie. Oh, the heartbreaker from your car shop. The doctor. Actually, she's... I'm a registered nurse. Nurse? Mm -hmm. Right. Sorry. This case of the mistaken occupation wastes our time with a momentary tension that will have little to no bearing on the rest of the movie. You're supposed to be here two hours ago, man. <laughs> and that's our irresistibly charming Eric. Just going to save us some time and go ahead and give 20 sins to Eric because he is as giant of an asshole as this introduction makes him seem. Michigan State. Also, Easter eggs. And yes, I know the Michigan State sweatshirt is technically an Easter egg as well, so I'll just sing it again. Happy? Cross your heart. Okay. Hope to die. Reminding me of the unnerving sh I said as a kid. The well from the ring somehow makes its way into this movie. Now all I want is a Samara versus Deadites movie. Give it to me. Or I will rip out your soul. Also, why does this shot look way too much like the posters for the fictional kid sheriff and the real holes? Hopefully this still works. Looking at the outside of this house and wanting this to work. Why the hell did they have to bring the dog? I guess I get the positive reinforcement the dog provides for Mia, but didn't she have a favorite stuffed animal or pillow that they could have brought? Because we all know something is gonna happen to that poor dog. And why do you want me to hate you less than 10 minutes in, Evil Dead 2013? Why? Some teenagers probably just broke in here to drink beer, bump uglies. I do not believe there is a boner alive that would attempt bumping uglies in this gross of a fucking cabin. And if there is, that boner deserves a sin as well. Let's make this place livable. Did you bring brand new furniture and a couple hundred gallons of bleach, David? Because that would be a great start. Do you remember that lullaby mom used to sing us? To go something like, daughter, don't you dare cry or I will skip. Was it that? That's one of my favorites. David, there's something you need to know. You better come take a look at this thought in my mind cliche. We already tried this whole thing back in Flint last summer. Well, see, the first mistake you made, Olivia, was thinking anything good can come out of visiting Michigan. David, when she breaks, and believe me, she will, we don't want to let her leave. Yeah, but that might not be the best idea. What if she needs medical attention that Olivia is not equipped to provide? Or, you know, gets possessed by a demon. I can't stand the f***ing smell anymore! Is it the smell that surrounds you? I don't know what is wrong with you people, but there is something dead and it reeks. I'm sure Mia's senses are working overtime, XTC shout out and whatnot, but I do not believe that cabin doesn't have at least 47 different smells going on right now and the majority of them would not be pleasant. Also, when they open the cellar door, they are clearly repulsed by the smell. There's no way a rug and a wooden cellar door would cover that stench. This is not an odor that would be specific to heroin addicts. Ah, f*** you, movie. We do not ever need to see needles going in or out of someone's skin. Show them loading up the needle and we will believe the next action took place. Oh, be careful. These steps are old and rotten. Your mom's old and rotten. I mean, gratuitous foreshadowing. Also, who the f*** walks down into this cellar? Did all the f***ing blood by the entrance not give you pause? I think it's back there. Them investigating this smell instead of investigating a phone and calling the police. You know what? They don't show or reference a single phone in this whole movie. In 2011! See, this is when you leave the f***ing cabin. Oh, you're gonna keep investigating? Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> the fact that this book was wrapped back up in barbed wire makes me think that someone from the opening made it out alive. So why would they leave the book? How could anyone that knew this book's true power just leave it lying around? Play those dead cats out back later. The writers must have felt bad that Curiosity didn't kill those cats, so they made Curiosity about some cats killed 90% of this group. I don't even care if they washed it. Mia is drinking out of a glass they found in this house. This is weirdly the grossest cut in the entire movie. And let me remind you that this is a movie where Olivia cuts off half of her own face. Nothing like walking in the rain and catching pneumonia to kick a nasty drug habit. No one will be seated for the 25 second shot of the back of Eric's head. Someone took the time to put barbed wire all over that f***ing book. And yet Eric thinks, hey, this would be a great idea to cut it open. This book is so f***ed on the outside that if it isn't a book that unleashes demons to take over the world, then I would be asking for my money back. For an entity that is currently without a physical form, the terrain is definitely much more of an obstacle than one would expect. And, uh... I actually like to think this was supposed to be Canada, because Canadians are way too nice for me not to think they're just trying to lure me back to their homes for some watered-down beer and a seance. No! No, no, no! I don't care that this is an Evil Dead movie or that the main character is going through detox. We do not have to see her vomit. We never have to see anyone vomit in a movie. Stop it! Please, God. 
Give me a break. Getting out of the rain is something you could do without God's help, and it would probably be a great idea. <laughs> Holy sh**, Samara really is in this f***ing movie. Are they really that surprised she escaped and took the car? They literally just saw her grab car keys. And while we're at it, if they really wanted to make sure Mia stayed, whose bright idea was it to leave the f***ing keys out like this? I know it's sensible to avoid hitting someone when you suddenly see them standing in the middle of the road, but no one in the movie has done anything sensible up to this point. So starting now is the metaphorical equivalent of accelerating your car off the road into a ditch. Did this model of a Ford Taurus have airbags? Maybe, maybe not. Should she have been able to swim away from this? Maybe, maybe not. To be fair, if Mia wasn't getting possessed by a demon, she would at the very least have a serious bacterial infection from this pond water. She might have actually made out better with the demon possession. <laughs> Taking the road less traveled. This thorny situation is some terrifyingly grotesque proper horror, and would have made a good case for a sin removal, if we could in any way understand why the demon's telekinetic abilities are confined to wood and wood-based products. Why does this look so familiar? Oh, I got it. What you, what you, what you want, what you want? I am giving her the exact same treatment she would get at a hospital. She drove into a ditch and hit her head on the steering wheel, so unless you brought a machine to scan her dome, then this is just not true, and Olivia should know that. If we leave now, all of this mess will have been for nothing. Not if you take her to a hospital, Olivia. It's not like the hospital is going to start giving her heroin. I can't tell if this lighting choice was made by Mia or the cinematographer. What we have here is proof of two things. One, that I am ready and willing to be the last one aboard a TikTok trend. And two, I don't need an app to be an album cover. I mean, an asshole. Movie established Eric as a high school teacher, not an archeologist. We have no background to explain how he even knows what he's doing right now or where he got a Latin dictionary. David sees the hammer and they cut to Mia using the hammer. But we have no idea if this is a flashback or just a flash speculation. Nobody could have known she would do something so twisted. No, you should have known. Oh, Natalie, you were so close to being excellent at cinema sins. Actually, you all should have known how unpredictable things were going to get after she crashed a car into a ditch, ran through a thorn bush, and started rambling about a woman in the woods. Unfortunately, there are no points for second place. Only since. With any luck, it'll stop raining in a couple hours, and we'll be able to cross the creek in the morning. <laughs> oh, he's serious. <laughs> You are all going to die tonight. But I thought it was going to stop raining in a couple hours and they could cross the creek in the morning. Mia ruins everything. Ugh, not closing your mouth. It's totally psychotic. Olivia thinks this in any way explains the volume of vomit on her body right now. I just gave enough to put a horse to sleep. Would that not kill a human? Because you gave that to her when you thought you were only dealing with a human. I'm scared that what's happening to Mia has something to do with the fucking witchcraft in the basement. More like the witchcraft in your room, Eric. Being more concerned about washing your face than getting your friend the medicine she might need to survive. Olivia, what are you doing in there? Eric checks this situation on his own because knowing what he knows, this decision makes very little sense, keeping with the theme of confused motivations that runs throughout this movie. Clearly being in that house is a terrible idea, but that doesn't make this shed any more suited for performing medical procedures. This works. He's losing too much blood. Maybe he needs water and sugar, okay? What he needs is for you to call a Life Star helicopter. Once again, highlighting the fact that you all brought Mia out here to play doctor with apparently no way to contact emergency services in case Olivia administered enough sedative to put a horse to sleep. I just gave her enough sedative to put a horse to sleep. Which she did! I read a passage from that book. Read it. Yeah. Is Natalie seriously thinking about going down in the cellar to see what's up with the woman who just shot her own f***ing brother? I think Natalie is seriously thinking about going down in the cellar to see what's up with the woman who just shot her own f***ing brother! Movie shows us this soft-ass step again, because it's really important we keep getting reminded that it's not as hard as it used to be. We get it! Time has taken its toll, but you know what? It still works extra good. You just gotta give it more care and attention than you used to. Really, you can get plenty more years out of that sh Natalie gets pulled into the cellar, but then the demon just waits for her to regain consciousness because it's not so much what you do for work, but that you have fun doing it. There's no conceivable way David put all these hooks, chains, and nails in place so fast that the demon formerly known as Mia couldn't get out before he was finished. Once he feasts on five souls, the sky will bleed again, and the abomination will rise from hell. It's kind of funny how the story uses convenience to subvert the morality of the characters. Like, had David just been a shitty brother and said he was too busy to make it this weekend, then there wouldn't be enough souls here to pay the soul toll and the demon would have to get a regular job to support his family, I guess. What kind of a virus makes a person cut off their face with a piece of glass? If you give me a couple minutes on Twitter, I'm pretty sure I can find you a theory about one that does. So how do the demons pick which one of the guests gets to have the detached hand trick played on them? Is there a lottery? Is it an eeny, meeny, moe situation? I had to do it. <laughs> So much better now. Natalie does a successful 127 hours in under five minutes, but Mia's kiss of death earlier makes this otherwise impressive feat a pointless padding of the blood time. <laughs> Premature evil dead duration. Hold on, baby. 
Hold on, please. With the registered nurse being on hand to help Mia out, was there no other bandage-like material brought along that wasn't f***ing duct tape? Despite what everyone says, duct tape does not fix everything, especially open gaping wounds from chopped off appendages. And there is zero chance that duct tape is sanitary. I promise that everything's gonna be fine. Okay. Okay, baby. just cut her f***ing arm off. Does that sound fine? I hate Eric with the fire of several million suns, and he would be excellent at cinema sense. These inscriptions are confusing. Sometimes contradictory. Yeah, it's almost like you shouldn't have read any of it out loud, Eric, but here we are. In order to stop this, the possessed must be cleansed, purified. The book describes three specific ways. So the Necronomicon not only shows you how to unleash the evil beings, it also shows you how to put them back? That seems super contradictory for an evil book. If I kill my sister, she'll be at peace. Whatever is inside Mia, is the cause of all this. Really? Because it feels like you're the cause of all this. And if I'm wrong, the movie has provided no proof to that effect. What if she just lost her mind? What if she just needs a doctor? Yes, David, because that explains why Olivia got all demony and started cutting her face off and trying to kill Eric. Olivia did all that because Mia needs a doctor. <laughs> don't worry, guys. I'm pretty sure Natalie just needs a doctor. <laughs> Nail guns don't work like this and definitely not without some modifications that I'm pretty sure Dead Eyes over here did not make. Now, I'm not saying this wouldn't be painful or annoying, but I am saying that the movie has presented us with an unrealistic amount of penetration. David's arm and face survived this, but Eric's hand does not, making it hard for me to understand whether or not the movie understands crowbars. This time, the only f***ing way is the hard way. Letting us know that you think burning the house down with your sister inside is the easy way. <laughs> Guys, I no longer know what is happening. Would just like to point out that David's friend Eric is just sitting outside by the Jeep, most likely dying, while David is doing whatever this dumb shit is he's trying to do. I don't like Eric that much either, David, but currently you are being a selfish dick. Why does a demon that possesses insane strength need a fucking box cutter to inflict damage? She could just rip David's arms off. Despite having a weapon in hand, the demon Mia will now spend a lot of time just throwing David around before even attempting to kill him. It could be plot armor, or maybe he's the final boss for this level. It needs to be weakened before you can be taken down. Who knows? It's hard to tell with all the drowning, but this looks like Eric managed to sneak up on Mia and hit her with the crowbar. And somehow, in that sudden sneak attack, she got the opportunity to stab him. Not impossible, but still a bunch of bullshit. Also, why are the demons immune to tranquilizers but not blunt force trauma? David is not a doctor or a nurse and would have zero clue how much medicine to dose Mia with, but he does it anyways, and somehow it kind of works. David decided at the last second he couldn't burn the house down with Mia in it, but now he's going to go through with burying her alive? I don't know David personally, but just going to make the declaration that he is not the friend you want in life or death scenarios. He's going to f*** that up every time. Hey, that's good. Again? Do the demons not have any other tactic? God damn this movie. God damn and drag this movie to hell. David built this medical contraption with absolutely no medical training. And since the movie has made him out to be some kind of MacGyver, I imagine he also built this city on rock and roll. However, I've never seen a defibrillator that required needles to go straight into the heart. Even if this is a thing, I have to say this whole design is more about getting in as many stabbings as possible than it is about saving Mia's life. So all the wounds just go away after all that demon fuckery? That hot water that covered Mia in second and third degree burns wasn't imaginary. David? She is suddenly standing after being possessed and momentarily dead. David trusts this because he is an idiot, but we don't trust it because no one should, and the writers did that shit on purpose to keep us off balance. Well played, but if everything feels like a red herring, do fish even exist? Also, this burial thing working makes the beginning scene with the fire and shotgun blast to the face completely fucking insane. Why and how is the burial thing not plan A every time? Were the car keys sitting on this table the whole time? Meaning David did not secure the car keys before he was two seconds away from burning the goddamn cabin down? These wire cutters are not very stabby looking. Sure, they look like they would hurt if they were jammed into your neck and would probably draw blood, but that doesn't make this choice of weapon make sense. It's less stabby than the nails in Eric's arm. If you're like me, you're asking, when did he become possessed? And the movie's all like, fuck your logic. A quick search of theater webs will tell you that you can take this exploding gas can nonsense and shove it up your ass. I get why you're sad, Mia, but at least you got a cool dress out of the deal. Earlier in the movie, Eric talks about his findings in the book. He says, Once he feasts on five souls, the sky will bleed again, and the abomination will rise from hell. So was Mia's soul still counted as being fed on even though she was saved? And David died before anyone could feed on him. Are we counting Grandpa, the dog? Because that makes no sense. So at the most, if we're counting Mia, we have four souls that were fed on. The abomination rising from the grave is all the bullshit. Trying to fire up a chainsaw this close to your legs. <laughs> Convenient chainsaw gasoline is convenient. This magical crawl space appears out of nowhere to assist in this escape. Sort of. 
It also needs to create tension by making Mia confined and vulnerable. But it's helping, too. Man, this movie really wants Mia to lose her arm so we can have another chainsaw arm in the Evil Dead family, but why? And this movie's clearly more of a sequel than a reboot, so why is the chainsaw even still there? Shouldn't Ash have it on his arm? Enough of this we are not going to show what happens here, but believe me when I say Mia should not survive this I will feast on your soul. Based on this motherfucker. It really was a toss up as to whose one liner was going to get in the way of them winning the fight. So I have to give the movie credit for keeping us in suspense, but I also have to give it a sin for being dumb. No reason to move any faster. You're only bleeding out and will probably be dead in the next few minutes. Walking toward the cabin that is on fire doesn't seem like a great idea, but you do you, Mia. Groovy. An end credit scene is not as groovy as Ash being in the actual movie. Eric did it because he hates you. Grandpa? In a sense, we are related. What the fuck am I doing? What the fuck am I doing? Driving through people's backyard, knocking down mailboxes. I released something, David. I released something evil. Evil! Surprise, motherfucker. I released something, David. I pooped my pants. I can smell your filthy soul. God, it really does smell bad. My eyes hurt. He's coming. You be gay, motherfucker. Your mother eats kitty litter. Oh, if I see a hole, I'll hide in that hole. Diplomatic community. It's just been revoked. <laughs> <laughs>